Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's No Name back at it again with another Giants video. Uh, first and foremost, I encourage you to smash the like button and hit the subscribe button. It helps out the channel, helps it out in the YouTube algorithm and all that. Gets it out to more fans, more people like you guys. Uh, you know, follow the Twitter, the Instagram and whatnot. And I hope you guys are washing your hands and staying safe out there. But let's get on with it. So today I want to talk about whether or not the Giants draft was a versatile one. You know, going through, well not necessarily going through all 10 of their picks. I've already done that more than enough I think on the channel. I have a vid out for each of them. You can go and check it out. I have a draft graded video where I give grades to the picks. But you know, kind of, you know, generally speaking upon the 7 rounds and the 10 players that we brought in from the NFL draft. And judging whether or not it was a versatile one and the reason that is is because of course versatility is something that our new head coach Joe Judge has preached since he essentially took the job as the new Giants head coach It's something that Patrick Graham our defensive coordinator has talked about since he took the job as our new DC it's something that's kind of been a theme for the Giants this offseason you know they want to approach versatility and they want to attack versatility and I bring that up because well, we want to see how much of their word that they're giving the fans they're actually sticking to, you know. For example, uh, the offensive line, at least with Gettleman, since he's been here, he's said he wanted to make it a commitment to fix the offensive line. We could agree without a doubt, or at least in my opinion, without a doubt, the most improved, you know, unit, the most improved part of this entire team coming out of the draft was the offensive line. We spent three of our top five picks on linemen, you know, pick four. The first rounder on Andrew Thomas, the best left tackle in the in the class. Uh, pick 99, the third rounder on Matt Peart, a offensive tackle. You know he could play left or right. Obviously, I think he's gonna play right. Kind of a, de a developmental guy, or well, somebody with a lot of potential, and that I think could develop into you know a good starter. Not necessarily great or elite. Maybe he can, but definitely somebody that could turn into a good right tackle for this team. And then. In round five, I can't remember the number to pick, we got Shane Lemieux out of Oregon. Not sure where he's gonna go yet, but I, like I said, I'm, I'd put my money on him becoming our new center. He's been practicing to be a center. In fact, he could have been the center at Oregon if they did not have uh, Hanson. Uh, but Lemieux is somebody that was an absolute mauler at Oregon. And I'm not gonna say he started material yet because while I do think he's better than where he was picked at, I think he's a third or fourth round pick. Uh, I still, you know, I don't want to get my hopes up for anybody and say that this fifth rounder is going to come in and be a starter right away. But hey, maybe two, three years down the line, when we look back at this draft, our first five picks are all starters. I would not be surprised. But without a doubt, our offensive line is the most improved unit coming out of it. And so Gettleman stuck to his word there. In fact, you could argue Judge did stick to his word as he brought in Gary and Mark Columba to fix up the offensive line as well with the new aired out system that we're going to have, which requires a good offensive line. So when we look at the versatility of this class, you could argue for both sides, if I'm going to be honest with you guys. You could argue that we did not have a versatile draft, and you can argue that we did have a versatile draft. Now, what I'm going to do is kind of present both of those sides and let you guys decide, you know, which it was. For those people that are saying we didn't have a versatile draft, the main argument that they would make is that really the only truly versatile player we got was Xavier Bikini, right? He came in, um, he was as many people have described, kind of a lesser version of Isaiah Simmons, but I think that's a disvalue to who Sim, uh, to who McKinney is, because McKinney was the best safety in this class, and that's kind of getting overshadowed by overshadowed by this general label placed upon him. Now, it does have some truth to it. McKinney was the best uh, safety in the class for several reasons. You know what I mean? He was the best overall safety. You could make an argument for him being the best man coverage safety. There's certainly something to, you know, me, be made there between him and Grant Delpit, but it was a consensus number one that he was the best safety in the class and he's coming in and he's automatically our free safety and the versatility with him comes from being that he played slot corner at some times he played at the line of scrimmage at some times you know he played strong and free safety he was used in blitz packages in a similar way that Simmons was which is where that general label comes from and so without a doubt McKinney is the most versatile player in this class but going on with the argument that um you know that's being made against the class as a whole People say you can't put that label on the entire class because even though, you know, our, let's go back to the offensive linemen, these guys like Parrott and Thomas, 
they can play both on both sides of the field. It's not like realistically we're going to see them. You know, it's not like one player we're going to see Thomas line up on left tackle and then the next he's our right tackle. That's not going to happen. In fact, that would be pretty stupid. Same could be said for Lemieux. It's not like one player we're going to see him lined up at any of the guard positions and then the next he's going to be lined up at center because even though they can do that, they're not actually going to use it. So that's kind of the main argument being made here against the class being labeled as versatile even though we have guys that can play multiple positions there's probably only only going to be one that's going to be used in that way and that's xavier mckinney now for the other side of your argument that this was a versatile draft class and i will say i do hold the opinion that it was it's that versatility isn't just being all over the field at the same time you know being used in different packages versatility at the base core of it is really about being able to adapt to different schemes, different plays, different game plans, being able to change what you do week to week, uh, sometimes even play to play in games and adapt to new, uh, if you're on the offensive line, adapt to new rushes coming at you. If you're in the secondary of a defense, adapting to new looks that are going to be sent your way. And that definitely applies to, well, everybody we took in this draft up to the fifth or sixth round. I'm not really going to say anything for the seventh rounders. As I've said in my past videos, seventh round guys are really long shots. Now, you have examples out there that come on and make an immediate impact, but if we're talking about realistically and probability, you know, speaking here, seventh round guys, it's a very long shot that they make the team and have an impact. So for the first four, five, you know what, five, six rounds, without a doubt, this type of versatility applies to them. It applies to Andrew Thomas, who can adapt to whatever's coming his way, to Xavier McKinney for sure, who both definitions of versatility applies we go down the line and this this is what in my opinion joe judge wants he said he wanted you know at one week to run the ball a hundred times and then the next week to pass it a hundred times being able to switch up that offense the lineman that we took definitely allows for that and then on the defensive side generating pressure from the secondary along with them still doing their jobs of covering wide receivers tight ends and whatnot the guys we took applies to that and as we go down the line you know Past a Matt Peart, we get to Darnay Holmes, who's somebody that I've been liking a lot more, you know, more and more as the weeks go on. Well, it's been one week. As you talk about uh, Darnay Holmes, you look at him a bit more. I'm starting to like him, you know, more and more than what I initially thought he was going to be on draft day. And I'll be honest with you guys, I think he has a better chance of actually taking that roster spot and taking that starting job from Junior Love as this slot corner than a lot of people expect him to. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm, I'm starting to lean that way. Darnay Holmes, let's talk about it from a technical standpoint already. I think they're more even than people think technically sound. And definitely with football IQ, Holmes was considered the smartest player in the draft by a lot of people. It shows in the fact that he graduated from college in two and a half years, which is no small feat. And technical, technically speaking, Julian Love does has an advantage because he has that one year of experience in the NFL. And Julian Love, in his own right, is a versatile player. I've speaked on that multiple, you know, spoken on that multiple times with him playing safety and cornerback. But what might edge out Holmes over Love is the fact that Holmes is just more versatile. One of the biggest knocks on Julian Love was that he was not as fast as we would like for a slot corner or free safety to be. His speed is in lateral mobility, but he doesn't have just that regular quickness, that regular speed that cornerbacks have to keep up with wide receivers. And that's something that Holmes definitely has. The 4-2 speed shows when he's playing on the field. And I just want to say, man, Holmes is becoming, you know, more and more somebody that I think can take that position. And if you go back, you know, years and years before, Holmes was one of the top cornerback recruits from his high school class. You know, that was the same high school class along with Jeff Okuda. And of course, Jeff Okuda, without a doubt, is the best cornerback in the class. But just showing that it's not like somebody like Darnay Holmes came out of nowhere. He's been a highly recruited prospect for years. And of course, you could go down the line. I already spoke on all three offensive linemen about McKinney, about Holmes. Cam Brown, the linebacker we took in the sixth, he played all three linebacker spots, you know, at Penn State. And even though Penn State runs a 4-3, I have no doubt in my mind he could adapt to being a middle linebacker in a 3-4 system. And if you want to get into the seventh round a little bit, the one guy I would look at is Carter Coughlin, who was a hybrid linebacker at Minnesota, able to blitz, able to cover, able to drop back in coverage and, you know, take care of tight ends and running backs, versatility there. So in my opinion, as of right now, Joe Judge, the coaching staff and Gellman are living up to what they set out to do. And one of the main things they set out to do with the draft, and I guess with continuing to build this team, was build a versatile one. 
and I think they did, although that is your opinion to make. So let me know what you guys think. Put your comments down below. I'll be reading them, replying to them. I'm out. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yer.